Art Snackers, my name is Roxanne. I'm a mixed media artist and illustrator, AKA Bun. Get that watercolor paper and your brushes ready because we are about to splash into the July box. This is the Art Snacks box breakdown. Welcome back to another box breakdown where we take a closer look at some of the supplies found in the most recent Art Snacks box and explore some techniques while we're at it. Now if you haven't picked up on it already, this box for me at least was all about water. Now I'm not saying go and plunge into your swimming pool with your Art Snacks box, although that would be kind of awesome. But from the Pentel pen, those Caran d'Ache colored pencils, and heck, maybe even that atomic fireball if you can't handle it, um, all these supplies have some really interesting techniques used with water. So sticking with that theme, I got myself to the closest body of water that I could, and being in the city of Los Angeles, for me, that was good old Echo Park Lake. <laughs> Look at me, being all outdoorsy. With my sketchbook and my Bagu bag full of supplies, which you may remember this bag in the August 2016 box, but you can also grab one from the Art Snacks shop, I set myself up lakeside to do some drawing. To start things off, I am working in my watercolor sketchbook and doing some sketching using the Derwent HB drawing pencil. This pencil is lightweight, super comfy to hold, and has a really tough core. Now that's great for situations like this where I'm drawing outside and I don't want to deal with a lot of pencil breakage because let's be honest, that's really lame. So I've been on this weird kick of doodling kind of figures and objects into Polaroids lately, so that's what you're seeing me draw up here. With my sketch complete, I am now moving on to the Derwent 2-in-1 eraser and sharpener. You'll see that I'm going to be using this as a kind of transitional tool. First, I'm popping off the cap and getting to some erasing. You'll notice that I'm cleaning up some edges and just erasing some general lines, but then I'm lightening up my entire sketch by dabbing or loosely dragging the eraser. This helps tone down your pencil lines for when you come back in to add ink or color later on. So here's where the transition part comes in. After cleaning up my sketch, I'm now going to be sharpening up my next tool, which are those Caran d'Ache colored pencils. Now before we get to these colored pencils, I have to tell you that every colored pencil master out there will tell you that the number one rule to using this medium is keeping your pencils sharp. So shout out to Art Snacks for pairing these two items together. Now let's talk about these museum aquarelle colored pencils from Caran d'Ache. Both the quality and the design and look and feel of these, this my friends, is a good looking colored pencil. And I've never said that about a colored pencil, so there's that. They're creamy, they're super pigmented, and a little bit goes a long way. While you can pack in the pigment if you want to, you'll see that I'm kind of lightly adding it into my background, applying the color in small areas and in a circular motion. Okay, remember when I said a little bit goes a long ways? Watch what happens when you add water, because yes, these guys are water soluble. Using a water brush that I picked up from the Art Snacks shop, I'll squeeze a little bit of water into the bristles, but then I'll wipe my brush into a paper towel. This is because I really wanted saturated color, so a damp brush was really all I needed. There's kind of two ways to think about this when you're using these pencils. First is coming in with just a damp paintbrush, so it's not super wet and you're not using a lot of water. That's gonna allow you to contain the pigment into a smaller area and get really kind of bright, saturated color, depending on how much you put down. The second way to go is to come in with a really wet paintbrush or use a lot of water to basically fan out the pigment. The farther you move it out, the less saturated it's going to be. So really just depends on what it is that you're drawing or what you're working on, and experiment with both applications and see which one you like best. I went with a damp brush method on this one because I was working in a much smaller drawing and wanted to keep the color kind of contained within that background of that Polaroid picture. Something else to note here is that these pencils are so high quality that the minute you hit it with water, your pencil marks turn into gorgeous watercolor. They're great for backgrounds, you can play with how much color you put down or move around, you can blend colors together, and they are especially fun for creating shadows, much like what I'm doing here. Now it's time for the really fun part, the pen work. As a major pen geek, it took me all of about three seconds to fall in love with this pen. This new Pentel Duo Point Flex double-ended brush, whew, yeah, 
say that 10 times fast, is two-sided with a super rad and springy brush tip on one side and a super fine and bendy nib on the other. Can I also just point out the attention to detail on the design of this pen in that both caps fit into one another? I know this is super minor, but it's a big deal if you're out and about somewhere and you don't wanna lose your cap. Instant replay, please. Knowing that I can create different types of line just using one pen, I'm gonna start off with the brush tip to add in some bold lines. You can keep the pen more upright for a thinner line or gently press into that springy brush tip for a thicker line. With my bold lines down, I can now switch to the fine nib and pack in all the details. So just like our colored pencils, this pen is water soluble, so get that water ready. Instead of using a water brush here, I actually decided to use a paintbrush, and this was a paintbrush that I picked up from the January Art Snacks box, and it is the Snap Series brush by Princeton, and this allows me to use a damp brush with a bit more control and something that has a really nice fine tip. So there's essentially two ways to go here. You can either come right on top of your lines with your damp brush and create some blending or some shading. The second method is that I can actually relocate the ink where I want to. Put your brush into where you have a bit more ink down and your brush will actually pick some of it up. With that little bit of ink on your brush, you can put it down into any other area of your drawing, basically creating extra details or a little bit of gray shading. So there you have it, the July Art Snacks box. If you're new to Art Snacks and want to get your hands on a box, I will put a link in the description where you can sign up. While you're here, don't forget to subscribe to this channel for future box breakdowns. Give this video a like and follow Art Snacks on social media. This has been the Box Breakdown, and I'll see you guys next month. Bye!